Well, that brings us to the final item in today's program, which has been prepared for us by Margaret Potter. So now we are making music. This recording of an early Victorian musical box introduces a story which I think is remarkable from any standpoint. It was recorded in a music shop, but the shop itself is inside a building which formerly was the gatehouse of a medieval abbey. At Kirkstall Abbey Museum Leeds, you can see a fascinating collection of shops and craft workshops which have been erected in a maze of cobbled streets and alleyways guaranteed to take you straight back to the early days of the last century. The music shop, however, with its bay-fronted window displaying violins, flutes and faded manuscripts of bygone hit tunes goes back even further than that. The owner's name, stated boldly above the window in letters of gold, is Mark Dearlove. It is with him and with his descendants that our story deals. It's told in part by the director of the Leeds City Museums, Maynard Mitchell. Well, this isn't a very large shop as modern shops go, uh, but in the 18th and 19th centuries they were roughly about this size, that is about 24 square feet. Now, the shop itself is completely filled with all the paraphernalia, the equipment and indeed the goods which would be sold in a musical instrument maker's shop uh, of the last century, the beginning of the last century. At the back of the shop, this is bench where all the tools necessary for the making of violins are displayed. In the shop itself, there's an ornate counter, there are harps, double bass, uh, music stand, music stools and the like. But it's the shop window itself with its golden glow which uh, particularly attracts people. And here we have a miscellaneous assortment of musical instruments. Thus there are cellos, uh, violins, violas, clarinets, oboes, cornets, uh, even a piano practicing keyboard. This is completely silent and you can take it with you on the bus or the train and do your practicing there. In fact, I'd recommend this to some of these modern beat groups. They wouldn't annoy their neighbors when they were practicing at night. Uh, as well as this, there's an old sailor's concertina. Yes, it still plays, but here is one of our most prized possessions. It's rather an unusual looking instrument. It's five feet tall, it's black, it's got numerous keys on it. Uh, in fact, it looks quite a, an elaborate piece of ironmongery. It is, in short, a contrabassoon, a very, very rare musical instrument. Not only does it play, but we also lend it out to the Halley and other orchestras on occasion, because such instruments are so rare. Uh, now, I don't play in the Halley. In fact, I don't play any musical instrument at all, but I can certainly produce a sound out of this. It's got uh, a typical Mersey sound, but not the sound that you think of. It's the more like a ship coming up the river. Just listen. Not the sound one would expect from the Beatles. Uh, but all the stringed instruments, including the cello and double bass, were actually made by two men. The Mark Dealer, who founded the shop in Brigate Leeds in the year 1770, and his son, Mark William. Mark Dearlove was not only a maker of musical, musical instruments, though, he was also a very fine musician, and he handed this tradition of music right down to the present day. It's said that either he or his family, of ten sons, could play every instrument in the shop. No trouble there in providing the ingredients for a musical evening. In all, Mark Dearlove had 42 descendants who either played instruments, sang, or acted upon the stage. One of them did both, judging from a highly colored theatrical poster hanging in the shop. Badowski, the marvelous tall piano player, king of instrumentalists, 
Here I see this great triple act with voice, concertina, and piano. A mental and physical triumph. And the poster shows the great Padorsky, alias Mark Vincent Dearlove, sitting on a high stool, playing the piano with his toes, fiddling away for dear life on his violin, and singing at the same time. <laughs> I'll bet he knocked him in the aisles way back in the 1890s. But one of the most intriguing aspects of this story is how the music shop came to be reconstructed in the Kirkstall Abbey Museum. It all began with two miniature musical instruments, a double bass and a violin, which were carved for the Great Exhibition of 1851 by Mark William. Jack Dearlove, great-great-grandson of the founder of the firm, now takes up the story for us. Well, after the 1851 exhibition, uh, my great-uncle took the miniatures with him to Australia when he emigrated. So when the 1951 centenary exhibition came along, I decided it was more or less a duty to have them exhibited again. So I sent for them to Australia, and they sent them back to us, and I had them put in the Victorian Albert Museum in London. After the exhibition had closed, I brought them to Leeds, showed them to the family who had never seen them, and then brought them to uh, the Leeds City Museum where they were exhibited there. And that is where I met Mr. Mitchell. So I remember, Jack, the time you came in with those two instruments. I turned to you and I said, have you any more musical instruments or any material whatsoever about your family? And you said, well, I think I can get hold of some. And I said to you, if you can, I'll try and reconstruct Mark Dearlove's old shop in Brigade. And that started something. That certainly did start something. I travelled the whole country and sent all over the world for bits and pieces that had belonged to the family and uh, which had been made by the family in most cases and brought them to you. Do you remember me coming back from London with that double bass, dad's harp and violin? Yes, all crammed into one car with you. Well, I don't know how on earth you got in the car to even drive it. I also remember the time you bought those two side drums and the kettle drums and a lot more timpani <laughs> stuff loaded on top of the car. Of course, there were other things, you know, besides instruments, if you remember. The tools, they had to be sent for. They were all sent over. Backs, bellies of violins and cellos and bows. Even the dies, they, they stamped the instrument with at the back. I remember going to see an old aunt and, uh, she, well, I don't think I have much for the family, but... Uh, Will these be any use? Little did she realize there were two of the most important little details in this shop. Uh, in my search for anything connected with the family, musically speaking, I came across theater bills, programs of concerts, circuses, just ordinary valley garden programs, cuttings from newspapers. Really, it's, it's all very interesting, you know, to think that they played practically in every village town, city, in the country. The Theatre Royal, South Shields, 1874. Thomas Dearlove, the Northern Nightingale, performs a solo on the piccolo. <laughs> the Bon Accord Music Hall, Aberdeen, 1868. The great Dearlove in dramatic presentations from the works of the bar. Vance's Varieties Limerick. Master Reginald Dearlove, solo violinist. Mr. Richard Dearlove, flautist and conductor. But there were other highlights in the family history, too. In 1834, Mark William, dear love, repaired a violin for no less a person than the great Paganini when he gave a recital at Harrogate. And Jack's grandfather had the privilege of accompanying the Swedish nightingale Jenny Lind during a rendering of Lo, Hear the Gentle Lark. And Jack himself, that great-great-grandson, well, of course, he was bound to follow in the family tradition. 
until ten years ago he broadcast regularly with his own orchestra. I wonder if any of you remember his singing tune, Rudolf Frimmel's Dear Love, My Love. One thing I've never asked you, Jack, uh, how old were you when you had your first professional engagement? Oh, I don't remember. As a matter of fact, I don't remember learning to play the violin at all. In our family, we just found an instrument there and picked it up. And if an uncle happened to be passing, he'd say, Oh, no, you hold the bow this way, Jack. Or you hold the fiddle that way. Uh, we, we had lessons later on, but by that time, we were probably playing in some theater orchestra somewhere. You know, Jack, I see here a vignette, one of these late Victorian and vignettes carried on into this century of you and all your family, your brothers, your sisters, your father and your mother, playing these musical instruments of an evening and learning this one. Is that sort of the picture? Well, it was mostly in the morning, you see, because we were very young, uh, eight, nine, ten. And uh, my sister and my cousin and I, we used to practice together. Doris, that was my sister, she was much older, so she played the piano and uh, helped us along. Uh, with her kindly ways of nursing us. Uh, then I went to play with my father in the orchestra, and uh, I'll never forget one day, the manager came to Dad and said, there's one missing in the orchestra. And uh, Dad took him to point the one out. He said, over there, look. Oh, no, he says, ah, oh, Jackie, you can't see him, he's low down. Oh, he said, well, then get him a buffet to sit on. It's a pity we haven't got the buffet here. That's probably the only thing that is missing. But tell me, Jack, you must have known a lot of the old-time music stars. Yeah, well, that's you? when my father was a conductor. You see, we played for Mary Lloyd, George Roby, Vester Tilly, Harry Champion, Will Fife, Albert Whelan. In later years, of course, I became a conductor myself, conducting for many of the artists I've mentioned. From then onwards, I went to, to the silent cinema, from then on, of course, became circus, ballet, grand opera, and then stage bands became very popular when talkies came in. And in one stage band, I had a, a lovely young lady playing with me. I think you'll all know her. Violet Carson, may have been better known as Ina Sharpland. What a great artist that lady is. Pianist, vocalist, actress. Well, finally, to show listeners that the dear love tradition of making music still continues, Jack, with his cousin Jack, is going to play a short piece for us here in the museum on instruments which were made by Mark Dearlove oh, 150 years ago. Mark Dearlove, a man who founded not only a business, but a long line of musicians. Age and strings willing. that item by Handel, back go a violin and a cello into the window of Mark Dearlove's shop, now preserved for all time at the Kirkstall Abbey Museum, Leeds, from where these recordings were made. <laughs> 